I wanted to take some time to demonstrate and show off my RC2014 system. This is a Z80 processor based system uh, designed by Spencer Owen originally, the backplane is a 12 slot backplane. Um, the mixture of modules designed by Spencer and by the community, uh, there's a breadboard by myself on the end. I just kind of wanted to um, go through slot by slot and uh, show this machine off. So. I'm going to turn off the power to it completely. And when it turns on, the first thing you'll actually see is the terminal software. There's a, uh, a Pi Zero over here that just sits on the serial bus so that I don't have to connect a whole laptop to deal with the RC2014. So when you press reset for the system, now we're actually in the RC2014. And so right now, this is actually the BIOS posting. Um, if I press 4, that's actually the slice, this disk 4, IDE 0 there, um, which is my compact flash card. Uh, so slice 4 is the OS I usually use, uh, ZPM, similar to CPM3. Boots you into a system directory, and then there aren't subdirectories in CPM, but there are user areas. So if I go to a different user area, this one has all the root utilities. Um, you can see there's fdisk in there text editors, um, some various other things, mbasics in there. So in my personal folder here, when I first started with the RC2014, and I have to switch back to user area zero, when I first started with the RC2014, a lot of what I did was writing things in basic um, to control inputs, outputs, uh, the sound card that I have on here that we'll get to in a minute. So a good place to start with this would, would be mBasic. So I actually have macros on my, my keyboard, which I'll talk about more as well. Um, but in mBasic, I need to go back and see what I want to load. I can type system, and I can do a, like a dir star dot base. And you can see I got a lot of stuff on here. So I guess the first thing we'll look at is maybe just cycling like a digital IO or something. Um, so, I'm going to turn on my caps lock here for mBasic, um, see what we want to load here. I made one that counts up and down in binary, so we'll have a look at that. And so, um, there's just a subroutine that stalls and really all subroutines and let's see if we're on so this is on output zero so this should actually cause the um, the dot matrix display yep and you can see it flash in there so I can break on that and then I also have a macro usually that will yep that will shut off those outputs and clear on basic so more interestingly though Let's see what I got on here. See if I have one mapped to my uh, to my relays. Let's try IO cycle. If I have a quote or it won't find it. is also out zero um, but we can actually just edit this so I want to change line 20 to use a different output so I'll use output 1 and then 2 to the F and then also on line 60 this you should actually hear a lot of clicking if I did it right yep and so IO ones also displayed on this SC this um, IO which is a third-party module so these two power supplies down here 
the one powers, the one on the left powers the system, and the one on the right powers those relays. And the reason for that is if, if you've got mechanical things clicking on and off on your main voltage, it's, it's not going to be helpful for your processors and your logic chips. So those are, those are isolated from each other, and that's the reason for the two power supplies. So let's go through this a module uh, at a time here. And so the first one in line is the floppy disk controller. And we'll grab uh, ZS DOS. And my floppy drive FD0 is disk unit 2. And it take, of course takes a minute longer than the compact flash, but in just a moment here we are booted from floppy. As you can see it looks a bit different because it's a different operating system. The floppy controller is, is neat for one other reason. And I'll boot back to my main operating system here. And it's, it's this quick. You just click reset and boot back. Um, this disk is labeled with fat files on it. And it can actually transport back and forth between a modern USB floppy drive. And if I do fat dir 2, which is the same unit we just booted from before we booted back to the CF, it will actually read that disk as a FAT formatted disk. Now I can't just use those files from the command line, I have to use this same FAT utility to copy them into CPM user space, but it's still super useful. I don't have to download files over like a serial connection. Uh, I can literally just download a file, copy it over USB to a floppy disk, and it's good to go. So next in line is a sound card, that's a really fun one. I've filled up one of the slices on the compact flash with just a bunch of music and I would encourage you to check the other videos on my channel if you want to hear these in proper stereo because they are they're hard panned they're hard separated left and right but nonetheless we'll go ahead and play a song here for a second Turn my amplifier on. So the sound card uses a Yamaha YM2149 chip and then the purple PCB on top of it is actually a separate oscillator that keeps it at the right frequency to play everything in tune. So that one was really fun. Uh, next in line we have our dot matrix. So we'll run a quick demo on that. If I remember where I put it. There we go. And I did not write this utility, but it's just the funnest way to uh, to show this guy off. So I'm gonna just do a random seed, and you put it in like in hacks. So And it uses multiplexing uh, to accomplish this, which is a topic for another day. If you want to control it in MBASIC, though, you can out, like, zero a value, and then out two a value, and you'll actually get 
a matrix of your values. So pretty easy there. So we'll go ahead and just reboot. And the CF, I don't really have to show off. The processor, of course, we've been using the whole time. The RAM ROM is interesting. It's 512K RAM, 512K ROM. I don't actually need Compact Flash technically to use BASIC. If I reboot into the BIOS and I don't choose a disk unit, um, I can use one of the options at the bottom so I can just hit BASIC and it will open up the Z80 version of BASIC for me. It's a lot better when you have the persistent storage, of course, but nonetheless, um, ROM WBW is the BIOS, very well maintained uh, by a gentleman named Wayne, and uh, quite fond of it. Can't, can't speak highly enough of it. So next in line is the Wi-Fi card. Awesome. So Q-Term, um, it's just kind of like opening a... Uh, terminal on your computer really it emulates uh, Hayes modem commands so if I ask it for like information it'll tell me the name of my Wi-Fi my address um, this was already configured uh, from previously I compiled the ZI modem firmware and then when you start this up there are other AT commands to reconfigure or pick a new SSID um, but we'll just go ahead and we'll see if the BBS that I've got in my house is up um. Sweet. This doesn't have proper full ANSI support, but it's good enough that I'm going to use it for this um, this demonstration. So. Black and white, of course, works fine, um, but there's a couple reasons I want to do this. So I've installed actually a door game on here, or as a door game that is not a game, it's an IRC script uh, that allows me to connect right now to the Apple Fritter um, IRC chat, uh, but I can configure what it, you know, what it connects me to. There we go. Toggle names, and we are online. So we are right now. The full chain is that this Wi-Fi card is connected to my to my home Wi-Fi. Of course, I'm connected to a BBS through that that is providing me access to IRC. So this is back into the Mystic BBS. The main reason initially that I set this up actually was for a file area. Um, so you can see that uh, I did a mass upload of ProTracker tunes to my BBS, but it was much easier inevitably in the end to just use a floppy drive. Uh, but nonetheless, this was, was pretty fun. So you can obviously connect to any um, any BBS that supports ASCII, ANSI's is hit or miss, uh, but that's just due to the Pi Graphics terminal limitations. It's not really um, an issue with the RC2014 itself. The RC2014 is really just putting things out on two serial buses, which we are getting to. So the next thing in line actually after the Wi-Fi is the dual, dual serial. And you see we actually got stuck in red when we disconnected. Um, I wrote a little basic script that just puts it back or resets the terminal so that you don't have to completely turn the computer off, but um, helps if you're on the right drive. And Control w and Control e will actually <clears throat> scroll up and down through your commands. Like if you're on a Linux terminal, you press up and down to go through your commands. Same thing, I can go through my, uh, my previous commands with that so uh, now we're back uh, back in white terminal so yeah dual serial bus <clears throat> the main serial bus is what's communicating with pi graphics for graphics and then with the keyboard adapter for input so this keyboard adapter right here 
is taking input from the Commodore 64 keyboard, encoding it to serial at the correct baud rate, and then inputting it to the RC2014 on the main bus. The Wi-Fi card is on the second serial bus, and next to the dual clock module, which is this guy here, is a or sorry, dual clock speed module next to the dual serial module. So this is full clock speed, and this is divided to make the the Wi-Fi modem run at 96 instead of something too fast. The next was the SCIO. That's what was triggering these relays. It's also hooked to a custom circuit board to accept input. Uh, Pi graphics we've been using the whole time. And then this is just my little custom breadboard on the end. It shows me that my 5 volts is good. I have an optional USB if I don't want to use the Commodore keyboard. I have to disconnect that. Relay module. So there you have it. There is my beast of an RC 2014. Thank you so much for uh, for watching this, if you actually watched it in its entirety. This was really fun to build, like I said, or may have said, it took me about a year off and on uh, to complete this, so pretty proud of it. It's fun to use. Of course, I just type a list because I was using basic, but that is not the command that I need right now. But we'll go ahead and just play one more song and wind it up here. Again, thank you so much if you actually watched all this through. Questions are always welcomed and, and invited. Cheers.